The sun is shining for many of us today. There's blossom on the trees. Things are looking very different compared with March. The wettest March since 1981 for England and Wales. So what's changed for April? And is April looking any drier? How's the Easter weekend looking? And will it be fine or wet for the rest of the school holidays? I'll be trying to answer all of those questions in this week's Deep Dive. Hello and welcome. My Met Office meteorologist, Aidan McGiven. We do these deep dives each week on a Tuesday here at the Met Office. And uh, if you're a fan, please do hit the subscribe button, click like, add a comment. We might uh, get around to answering it in a deep dive or we might be able to reply to one of your comments as well. So, uh, yes, please, please do hit subscribe. It does help to justify doing more of these sorts of things on YouTube. Now, before we get into the forecast for April, let's take a quick look at how March fared because I think I've showed one of these before on the deep dive and it's quite remarkable how wet it was across much of England and Wales across March. Now, this is the rainfall amount compared with the average for March and the blues show where it was wetter than average and these dark blues quite extensively across the southern half of the UK show where we saw two times or more than March average rainfall. The only place where it was average or a little below average was northwest Scotland and actually this was quite a reversal compared with what we saw in February, a very dry month for much of England and Wales and it was around average or slightly above for northwest Scotland so a real flip in the weather patterns. And the reason behind that was something that we flagged quite a lot actually during uh, uh, January and into February, which was this sudden stratospheric warming that we saw in the middle of February. Now that's when the atmosphere in the stratosphere 50 kilometers above sea level heats up quickly and you get this disruption in the wind circulation surrounding the North Pole in the stratosphere. And that can disrupt the jet stream. And that is in fact what we saw a couple of weeks after that sudden stratospheric warming, weather patterns in March significantly changed. And what we saw in March was we saw this area of high pressure, just like that, uh, start to form over Greenland, a very large area of high pressure with um, that exerting its influence further south across the Atlantic. And so we had this south shifted jet stream and that south shifted jet stream brought low after low into southwestern parts of the UK. So this storm track was south shifted. Normally the storm track goes somewhere between uh, Scotland and Iceland uh, around here, but you can see it came in on a southward shifted track and we saw a lot of low pressure across England and Wales in particular. That's why it ended up being so wet in March. But of course we did need the rain. It was a dry February. It was a slightly drier than average winter. And uh, we've still got the legacy of the lack of rainfall that we saw through uh, the first half of last year, of course. So how's the jet stream looking now? Well, it is quite different, not entirely different. It's still pushing across the Atlantic there, but it's coming up against something as it approaches the UK. And this is the time of recording. We've got high pressure now sitting over the North Sea, over Scandinavia. And that's slowing down the jet stream and you can see it's causing the jet stream to divert across the UK. So it's weakening and slowing down the jet stream. And that's why we've got so much fine weather out there today. And it's not fine everywhere, of course. There is some cloud and rain around and that's primarily affecting Western Scotland. So for the next few hours, some patchy light rain and a thickening of the cloud across Western Scotland into Northern Ireland as well. Breezier here, but you can see across the rest of the UK Sunny skies prevailing for the rest of Tuesday. Now, some changes are going to take place over the next few days. Let's take a quick look at the bigger picture again. And that jet stream is going to force these weather fronts into the northwest of the country. And they're going to bring more extensive rain by the time we get to uh, Tuesday night into the start of Wednesday. The weather fronts toppling across the UK. That high pressure pushing back towards Scandinavia. And these weather fronts will bring a spell of wet weather across the UK, followed by a dip in the jet stream. And you can just about make that out. Here it comes into Thursday, this little dip in the jet stream. Let's pause it there. And what we've got, we've got a surface area of low pressure, just about there off eastern Scotland for Thursday, 11 a.m. And this dip in the jet stream, that means there's an upper low as well. And so the coincident upper and surface low will lead to quite a lot of rising air. So even when this main band of rain is out of the way, it's going to be a damp day on Wednesday, 
then we've got very unstable air coming in from the northwest and that's going to lead to quite a number of showers on Thursday and lively showers at that as well, some thunderstorms and some heavy rain in a short space of time. Now, once that's through, let's run it forward again and uh, just simplify things a little. The jet stream is a bit more amplified. It's a bit more wriggly, as you can see. Now, during March, it was in a flatter state as it came in on that south shifted track, but it's becoming weaker for the rest of the week. And it's coming up against, again, another area of high pressure there. And so as we start the Easter weekend, we've got this large area of high pressure over Scandinavia. We've got the jet stream coming in from the west, but it's forced to split in two and go around that area of high pressure, like putting a large stone or boulder into a stream and you get this uh, the, the diversion in the stream track. That's what's happening with the jet stream. It's diverting around this area of high pressure. And what that essentially means is our weather's going to really slow down this Easter weekend. So. Unlike March, where we had low after low after low, quickly moving in and moving through, this Easter weekend, we've got one area of low pressure to the west of the UK, one area of high pressure to the east of the UK, and a bit of a stalemate, really, certainly through Good Friday, through Saturday, Easter day as well. Very little change in this pattern. That high pressure pushing easterly breezes into the east of the UK, this low coming along, bringing southwesterlies into the northwest. And some question marks by the time we get to later Saturday into Sunday about how much these weather fronts will affect parts of Western Scotland and Northern Ireland. But for much of the UK, really, it's high pressure dominating things through the weekend until we get to later Sunday and into Monday. And then there are signs that these weather fronts will start to make inroads because this branch of the jet stream here out in the Atlantic will gather pace and that's going to force things through eventually. So. Eventually, the Scandinavian high will lose the battle, at least temporarily, and allow these uh, weather fronts to more widely push in across the UK. But a lot of uncertainty because such a slow moving weather pattern at the moment through the weekend, a lot of uncertainty about the extent to which these fronts will move in from the northwest. Now, while we're on the jet stream, I just want to show you something that's taking place over the USA at the moment, certainly through the next 24 hours. Let's pause it there. And what we're seeing is this upper trough, this big dip in the jet stream coming along, low pressure and a real marked temperature contrast across the USA. So we've got this very warm air here and cold air moving in from the west and all the ingredients for some severe thunderstorms and even some tornadoes. And so the outlook for Tuesday and into Wednesday from NOAA, the American Met Service, is for a moderate or an enhanced to moderate risk of tornadoes and thunderstorms all the way from Arkansas up to Iowa and Illinois uh, for parts of Oklahoma as well and Missouri. So there's this risk, this plume of air where we've got this warmth and moisture moving up from the Gulf of Mexico and then we've got this colder drier air coming in from the west and yeah, there could be some really serious thunderstorms, supercell thunderstorms and tornadoes as well as some very heavy rain and large hail. So that's uh, a risk through the rest of Tuesday and into Wednesday for parts of the USA. But back to our weather, and as I mentioned, we've got outbreaks of rain moving in from the west over the next few days. Let's skip forward to Wednesday. It's a damp and dull day for many. This area of cloud and rain moving through. Ahead of that, a frosty start for the southeast of England, minus two Celsius in one or two spots, but a bright day follows before the rain reaches here in the evening. And then for Thursday, the rain is out in the North Sea. Some outbreaks of rain could linger there across northeast Scotland, especially Shetland, a wet day expected for Shetland. Meanwhile, some heavy showers break out across much of England, Wales, western and southern Scotland, as well as Northern Ireland. And I'll just show you the rainfall accumulations were expected between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. on Thursday. So this is the six hour rainfall accumulations. And it just gives you an idea of the hit and miss nature of these showers but also where the showers occur, they will be fairly lively and the biggest risk areas for those heavy, heavy downpours. So this is the UK, you may just be able to make it out. There's Wales, for example, there's the southwest of England, that's Ireland there, Scotland, and there's Shetland. So Shetland in the wet weather through the day, persistent rain here. There's the band of rain 
pushing into the North Sea across um, uh, clearing eastern England. Elsewhere across the UK, showers breaking out and basically the the lines here in the in the showers show that wind direction carrying the showers. So these are rainfall accumulations, remember, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it shows the largest rain totals expected across parts of the Midlands into East Anglia and the southeast. So I think that's where the liveliest showers will be. Further west, still some showers around, but a better chance for West Wales into the southwest of England, southwest Scotland, Western Isles, as well as Northern Ireland, of seeing some decent gaps in between the showers. So where we've got the empty spaces here, the black areas, that's where uh, some places could miss the showers entirely. Wouldn't take this too literally, of course. It's, it just gives you an idea of the uh, hit and miss nature of the showers on Thursday. Not everywhere catching one, but where they do occur, they'll be heavy, especially towards the southeast. Now, as I mentioned, heading into the weekend, we've got that easterly airflow, but there's still some instability as well towards the east. And so showing a similar chart here for Friday and Saturday, rainfall accumulations through the 12 hour period, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for Friday here and Saturday here. And for Friday, you can see for the vast majority of the UK, it's dry. So we've got this large empty area, the black showing. And then for parts of Eastern England, just the indication of some showers just there. That This is 12 hour accumulations, not a great deal, naught to one or, or five millimeters in one or two spots, but it just gives you that indication, Aberdeenshire, the Northern Isles and parts of Eastern England. And a similar thing again on Saturday. So we've just got this uh, signal for some showers to develop across parts of Eastern England. One or two very light spots there for Scotland, but for the vast majority across the UK, Friday and Saturday, both looking dry. Then I mentioned that rain that's moving in. It's trying to get in from the west, and you can see it there across western parts of Ireland. It's trying to move in for the second half of the weekend. Now, on Easter Day, it's likely to make some progress into Northern Ireland and Western Scotland, some small amounts of progress, similar to today's weather, where we've got some additional cloud and some patchy rain here. But it gets very uncertain. And this is showing the 24 hour accumulations for Easter day. And it shows the result from what about 34 computer model runs. So these are where we tweak the computer model very slightly at the beginning and run it forward and had to look to see what changes by Easter day. And the brighter colors might be quite difficult to see, but the UK is in the middle of each of what we call these postage stamps and the brighter colors indicate where we're going to see some wet weather through Easter day. And just to describe them to you really, most of them, so this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, for example, most of them show very little rainfall across the UK. Some of them have some rain into Northern Ireland. So here, here, for example, um, and ooh, there's one, there's one as well. And some of them have rainfall into Western Scotland. One or two have rainfall more widely. So for example, this number 21 here has rainfall into Scotland, Northern Ireland, parts of Western England and Wales. So you wouldn't entirely be able to discount the possibility of more widespread wet weather moving into the north and the west of the UK on Easter day. But it does seem to be a low probability because the vast majority of these computer model runs are showing dry conditions across most of the UK. However, by Easter Monday, it is looking likely that we're going to see those spells of rain moving across the UK, especially across the north and the west. Again, there's some question mark about how much those weather fronts will push in because of the strong area of high pressure across Scandinavia. So that could weaken them considerably and could mean that across parts of the southeast, there's very little rainfall, if any at all, on Easter Monday. So that's the main question mark, I think, through the weekend. It looks like a dry start, a few showers in the east on Good Friday and into Saturday. But then between Easter Day and Easter Monday, weather fronts trying to make their way across the UK, bringing some wet weather to places, especially in the north and the west. It's uncertain to be at how far they push southeastwards because of that high pressure over Scandinavia. What we can say is that it's going to be a bit warmer this weekend compared with recent weather. So let's just take a look at some graphs here. And certainly for the likes of London, we're looking at a temperature rise up into the mid-teens, 14 to 15, 16 Celsius or so. Wouldn't be surprised if somewhere towards the southeast gets to 17 Celsius or, you know, given the wind direction coming up from the, uh, the southwest, somewhere like 
North Wales could get to 16 or 17 Celsius through the Easter weekend. Uh, Edinburgh as well, looking reasonable for temperatures, 14 Celsius there by Easter day. Aberdeen, 12, 13 Celsius. I think some of these eastern coastal areas limited a bit more on Friday and Saturday before the winds change direction to southwesterlies later in the weekend. And so the east coast could be quite cool over the next few days and then, and then it starts to warm up through the weekend. So yeah, Belfast, 13 Celsius. Manchester up to the mid-teens, so fairly widely, I think, up to the mid-teens by the, uh, the Easter weekend. And of course, there'll be some sunny spells out there. It's not going to be entirely sunny because on the one hand, we've got some of the uh, shower cloud moving in from the east um, on Friday and Saturday. And then later in the weekend, we've got the upper and medium level cloud moving in from the west. That will make the sunshine a bit weaker. So it's not going to be entirely sunny, but it will be fairly bright most days. There'll be some glimpses of sun here and there. And in the sun, of course, uh, UV levels are increasing at this time of year, so you may need to protect yourselves, you may, may need to cover up. Um, then what happens beyond that? Well, as you can clearly see, the weather patterns have changed. We've gone from that uh, high pressure over Greenland and that south shifted storm track to something that looks a bit more like this. This is the most likely weather pattern through the Easter weekend. And as I mentioned, high pressure to the east of the UK, this large area of low pressure to the west, and this standoff, this slow moving um, little tug of war, if you like, between these two beasts and you know, which one will win through the weekend. Well, it's likely to be the, the low pressure eventually, but the high could just influence things long enough in the southeast. That's a very different picture compared with the high pressure of Greenland and that south shifted storm track and it's this sort of weather pattern that looks likely to continue for the next week or so. This is the uh, pressure anomaly from the European model so this takes all the different computer model runs from the European model and comes up with the most likely pressure anomaly. It's got higher than normal pressure over Scandinavia, another area there close to the Azores and then lower pressure towards Iceland and Greenland. So a similar sort of thing where we've got high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west and some weather fronts likely to make their way into the northwest at times and occasionally through next week. Wouldn't be surprised if a few of them topple their way southeastwards. But the general theme through next week, so for the rest of the school Easter holidays, if you've got kids off school, then it's looking most changeable towards the northwest as these weather fronts influence things and most settled towards the southeast. So this gradient across the UK drier towards the southeast, wetter towards the northwest. So certainly not a repeat of March where we saw the wettest weather in the south. It looks more typical for the UK where we've got uh, wetter and windier weather pushing its way through uh, Scotland and Iceland and then drier weather holding on further south. And that of course will influence things like temperatures as well as um, rainfall distributions. So this shows the rainfall anomaly and the temperature anomaly from a similar sort of thing. This is the rainfall anomaly through next week, so Monday to Monday, next month, well, Easter Monday to the following Monday, and it shows wetter than normal conditions for Western Scotland and Northern Ireland, most likely, drier than normal for southeastern parts and for France and Spain and so on. And this shows a corresponding temperature anomaly, so widely across the UK, above average temperatures, more likely than below average temperatures, and that's because we've got this southwesterly airflow. So we've got some warmth coming along, and it will be warmest across central parts of the UK and you can see above average temperatures across much of northern and western Europe as well. So certainly the weather patterns have changed since March. The very wet conditions that we saw in the south during the last few weeks they seem to have come to an end and we're seeing much more typical weather for the UK, higher pressure towards the southeast, lower pressure towards the northwest and a fairly changeable day today but certainly some decent uh, spring sunshine to enjoy at times as well. Thanks for joining me for this deep dive. As I mentioned at the start, if you enjoy these, please do hit the subscribe button and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.